going to be building on the concept of the rate of return by looking at the compound annual growth rate. This, together with our next video on volatility, will be used as a primer for more complex models involving asset allocation. Let's begin. The compound annual growth rate is the rate of return that would be required for an investment to grow from its beginning balance to its ending balance, assuming the profits were reinvested at the end of each period of the investment's lifespan and allowed to compound. We use the compound annual growth rate, or CAGR, to measure the smooth rate of return for anything that can rise or fall in value over time, such as a stock. We can use the CAGR as a comparison tool between two stocks that may have different lengths of price history or holding periods to determine which generated a greater return on an annualized basis. It's important to note that the CAGR completely ignores the volatility or risk of these returns. We'll have a brief look at volatility in the next video. Let's present the formula. The CAGR is equal to the EV divided by the BV to the power of 1 divided by n, minus 1 and multiplied by 100, where the EV is the ending value, BV is the beginning value, and n is the number of years. Let's break this down. We divide the value of an investment at the end of the period we are examining, for example the present day or some other date in the past, by its value at the beginning of that period, which is any other date before the end period. We then raise the result to an exponent of 1 divided by the number of years. If it's less than a year or an irregular holding period such as 1 year and 30 days, then we need to get the number of days in the period divided by 365.25, which is the days in a year for the value of n. We subtract 1 from the subsequent result to derive the decimal value of the CAGR, and finally we multiply by 100 to convert the decimal into a percentage. Here's what the CAGR can tell you. It's not the true return rate, it's essentially a number that describes the rate at which an investment would have grown if it had grown at the same rate every year. In other words, its average rate of growth, assuming the profits were reinvested at the end of each year, or if it was bought and held through the entire period. Let's look at why this is important. Imagine we're looking at a stock that started at $1, and three years later, it ended up at $2. Some people using a simple return methodology would say it rose in value by 33% per year. While that is true that it was the average return over those years, it ignores the idea of what compounding would have done for somebody that bought and held it through that entire time. The CAGR for this would have been the ending value of $2 divided by the starting value of $1 to the power of one divided by three years minus 1 times 100 is 25.99 percent. Let's try to prove that by getting our starting value of one dollar and multiplying it by 1.2599 three times or in other words for three years. And ignoring the rounding error we find this to be true. But let's imagine the scenario where it started on one dollar, fell to 50 cents after the first year, then miraculously rebounded to two dollars by the end of the third year its CAGR would still be 25.99% in spite of the intra-period swings in value of this stock, and that is an important further use case of the CAGR. If we were looking at raw annualized stock return data, due to market volatility, the year-to-year -year growth of an investment will appear erratic and uneven. CAGR helps smooth returns when growth rates are expected to be volatile and inconsistent. This also presents an internal limitation of the CAGR. Because it calculates a smooth rate of growth over a period, it ignores volatility and implies that the growth during that time was steady. Returns on investments are uneven over time, except for assets such as bonds which are held to maturity, bank deposits and similar investments. Also, the CAGR does not account for when an investor adds funds to a portfolio or withdraws funds from the portfolio over the period being measured. It assumes someone buys and holds from the start of the period all the way through to the end. Besides the smooth rate of growth, the CAGR has other limitations. A second limitation when assessing investments is that no matter how steady the growth of a company or investment has been in the past, investors cannot assume that the rate will remain the same over the future. The shorter the time frame used in the analysis, the less likely it will be for the realized CAGR to meet the expected CAGR when relying on historical results. 
And finally, CAGR can be misconstrued by fund managers that purposely define the CAGR of their portfolios starting at periods that overinflates the final output. Let's consider a fund manager that began five years ago. Imagine they made negative returns for the first two years and a hypothetical $100,000 portfolio shrank to $60,000 at the end of the second year. Following this, the portfolio rebounded for three years with an ending balance of $120,000. This is where it isn't uncommon for the fund manager to use a three year period to the present day to say that they earned a massive CAGR, when in fact, if we consider the whole time frame, the CAGR would be very modest. In the next video, we'll work on defining volatility as a proxy for risk, which will be a foundation for a future video on optimal asset allocation. As always, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.